Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast that explores the life-changing potential of solo travel, intentional travel, and location-independent working. Whether you're an aspiring digital nomad or simply want to boost your confidence through epic travel experiences, I'm here to motivate and inspire you to go after all your wildest dreams. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, author, travel transformation coach, founder of Flip the Script Travel Transformation Services, and your host for the Travel Transformation Podcast. Travel changed my life. Now let's change yours. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast where we talk all things travel and all things transformation. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman and I'm your host for this episode. I don't know why I said that because I'm the host for every episode. I guess I'm still trying to work out my intros and outros for this podcast. Yes, welcome to the podcast. If you haven't heard before, I am Jessica Grace Coleman. I'm an author. I'm a travel transformation coach and I'm the owner of Flip the Script Travel Transformation Services. And for this podcast, I do solo episodes, interviews with travel buddies and people I've met through the travel industry, some fun episodes with some of my friends and people I've met traveling. And also I wanted to do some episodes where I go through some past itineraries of trips I've gone on that I particularly enjoyed and that I think you might enjoy too. And this week it is Ireland. Now I love Ireland. I've been to Dublin a couple of times for sort of long weekends which mostly involved doing touristy things and drinking in a temple bar. But I've also been to some more rural places, including Waterford that I went to with my friend Libby. I'm not sure if her parents still have the house, but when I went, her parents were splitting their time between London and a place called Waterford in Ireland, which is a very nice little rural area. I think it's near Cork. I think I remember flying into and out of Cork, which is a tiny airport. And... It was lovely and we had a great time. Unfortunately, Libby had broken her leg when I went there, so she was hobbling around on crutches. So we basically just sort of found a pub and stayed there for several hours drinking cider and beer. (laughs) It was a great holiday. I went for New Year, actually. One of the main things I remember is going to a pub on New Year's Eve and it was full of old Irish people, which was great. And it was a really cute pub. I actually included this pub in one of my fiction books in The Gloaming, um, which is a Little Forest paranormal mystery book. Uh, I write fiction as well as nonfiction. And yes, um, it was New Year's Eve and we were drinking and having fun. And they got to the point where it must happen every time they go to this pub. But it was a bit new to me. The old guys, one by one, started standing up and singing an old Irish folk song or a sea shanty or any of those kind of traditional songs that everyone in the pub, apart from me and my friend, um, knew the words to and joined in with. And it was just a really nice, wholesome moment with each guy standing up and singing, holding a glass of beer in the air. And they tried to get me and Libby to join in, uh, but Libby couldn't really stand because of her broken leg. And I couldn't think of any sea shanties or old Irish folk songs <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, my mind had also gone completely blank um, in terms of any songs, really. And I'm a terrible singer and I'm terrible at singing in public. So that didn't happen. But we did try and sing along with their songs. And that's one of the main things I remember. Another thing I remember from that trip to Waterford was going to the local pub with Libby and this guy coming in and, and informing us he was the mayor of Waterford. And so we sat down with him, we had a drink, he was telling us all about the town and about his work and he was, you know, rambling on and on and on and we couldn't really get rid of him. And then Libby's parents came in to have a drink with us and they asked what we'd been doing, this is after the guy had gone, and we said, oh, we've been hanging out with the mayor. And Libby's mom sort of did a face palm moment, sort of shook her head and sighed and we were like, what? And she said... Girls, there is no mayor of Waterford. It's just this old dude who goes around telling people he is just so he can sit and have drinks with people and ramble on about the town. So that was quite funny and we felt a little bit silly. But how are we to know? Anyway, that's what I remember about Waterford. Um, It's also very pretty. But the trip I mainly want to talk about is a road trip I did with my friends Ruth and Laura. Ruth I met in high school, Laura I met on my year abroad in Colorado, the University of Colorado in Boulder, and we're all big Father Ted fans. I want to apologise if you can hear rain and wind and everything. I still don't have a proper podcast studio because I roam around quite a bit, so I I have to record these where and when I can. 
the weather is terrible and I'm just hoping it doesn't pick up too much. I'm hoping I can edit it out, but if I can't, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, yeah, if you don't know what Father Ted is, it is an Irish sitcom that was around in the 90s, 95 to 98, and it was about three idiot priests, really, <laughs> or misfit priests, and their housekeeper, Mrs. Doyle. So Father Ted, Father Dougal, Father Jack, and Mrs. Doyle, who lived in the Craggy Island parochial house on Craggy Island, which is a fictional island, but one of the islands off the mainland of Ireland has sort of become Craggy Island because they hold a Father Ted Fest there every year. Sadly, I've never been there to the Ted Fest, but I did go to a pop-up Ted Fest in London, which was really cool. There was everyone dressing up, there were quizzes, there were games, there was a lovely girls competition, which if you've watched Father Ted, you'll know what I'm talking about. And yeah, it was really fun. Again, I want to say sorry if you can hear the rain battering against the windows. One day I will try and do this in a proper podcast studio, I promise. But back to Father Ted. So I just want to point out that the co-creator of Father Ted, Graham Linehan, has recently said some not great things in a similar vein to J.K. Rowling and has kind of been semi-cancelled, I would say. But I've always thought that you can't really judge a TV show or a film or anything like that or book series based solely on the creator. Obviously, it wouldn't have happened without them. But take a TV show, for instance, so many people are involved in the creation of that, from the actors to the directors to the producers to the audience that watches it live to the cinematographers to the showrunners to the guys making the tea for everyone. It's a group effort and I don't think we should punish all those people who've worked on such a show, especially if it's a show that's brought a lot of happiness and joy to a lot of people like Father Ted has. And I don't think we should, you know, totally boycott things like this just because of things that the creator might have said, even if they are terrible things. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. But oh yeah, I just want to point out this hadn't all come out when we did this trip and it has since, but I still don't think it should stop you from enjoying your favourite shows and things like that. Like I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. And when all the stuff with Joss Whedon came out, I did think, oh no, I can't watch it anymore. But I think that's a load of rubbish because if you stop watching it just because of things someone said, well, for one thing, we'd probably not be able to watch anything or listen to anything or read anything because nobody's perfect. And that's not excusing things that Joss Whedon did or Graham Linehan said or J.K. Rowling said. But I also think we shouldn't not watch it or read it or listen to it because of that. I think if it gives you joy, you can still enjoy it while not supporting, say, new projects that that person does or, or something like that. So we wanted to do a road trip around Ireland for Father Ted and we came up with an itinerary that included several Father Ted related things. And I have my photos from that trip now, so I'm gonna go through them. And we basically flew into Dublin and then rented a car and drove around. Actually, I think my friend Laura drove us around until we said goodbye to her in Northern Ireland and then I drove around. But yes, we went to Ireland. We did some touristy things like going to the shops and buying lots of Irish related tat. <laughs> which I always enjoy doing. We also went to somewhere called the Gin Palace, which was very nice. And we stayed in an Airbnb, which is just like an apartment. And they have lots of different apartments in one building. So it was that kind of Airbnb rather than a personalized place of where someone lives. But it was very nice. I'm looking on Airbnb now. It's called Downtown One Bed Apartment with a View. Entire rental unit hosted by Kevin. And that is Dublin One, County Dublin, Ireland. And I remember this place because we didn't actually get to meet the owner. We met someone who worked there. And then when I received my Airbnb review as a guest, <laughs> it said something like, Jessica, her husband and child were great guests <laughs> and to leave the place really neat and tidy. And I was just trying to figure out which of my friends... Ruth and Laura, who are both very kind of petite, lovely blonde ladies, <laughs> which one they thought was my husband or which one they thought was my child. So, oh, that was quite funny. But anyway, we stayed there and then we hit the road and we went to Kinsale, which is near Cork, I believe. And we stayed in another Airbnb called The Boathouse, which is hosted by Marcella. I think that's how you pronounce it. And if you're looking for it on Airbnb, it's just titled The Boathouse and its fantastic sea view can sail. And it did have a fantastic sea view. The front room was great, like windows out on, like literally right on the water. She stayed in a separate house and she had her own studio because she was an artist. And it was just so soothing, so peaceful, so quiet. We could see boats right outside. And I would highly, highly recommend that Airbnb. Very nautical themed as well. 
I think there was a main bedroom me and Ruth shared and then there was a little kiddie bunk bed that Laura <laughs> Laura crawled up into and stayed there. Looking at our pictures it looks like we went to a supermarket and got a load of nibbles and drinks and had those actually in the place. There wasn't much to do restaurant wise and things with it like within walking distance we'd have to have driven and besides we had an amazing view so we didn't need to go anywhere we just ate in there and chilled out. After that we went to the famous Blarney Castle which is great. It has the castle, it has some gardens, it has a poison garden as well which had a big sign with a skull and crossbones on. Which is great. But um, the main reason I would say that most people go there and I'm not sure it's still the case since Covid and everything considering what it entails um, but it's to kiss the Blarney Stone and I didn't really, I mean I'd heard about the Blarney Stone and Blarney Castle but I didn't really understand until I got there what exactly was involved in kissing the stone. So you have to go right to the top of the castle. It's like literally on the roof, queue up for a while. And then you get there and it's basically a sort of hole, the sheer drop (laughs) down to the floor. And it's quite a tall castle. And you have to get on your back. You have to lean over backwards. Luckily, there's two poles that you can hold on to. And a dude who works there, like this old, lovely old guy, had to help us. So he he sort of holds you. around your waist so you don't fall down the hole because that's a very realistic possibility especially if you're quite petite like my friends Laura and Ruth are and he holds you and you hold onto the poles and you have to literally crane your neck backwards over the hole and kiss the stone which I might add thousands if not millions of people have kissed before you (laughs) so I'm not sure if it's I should look this up since Covid if they're still doing it 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 seems like a bit of a weird thing to do now. (laughs) I mean, it seemed weird anyway. But um, yeah, so we kissed the stone and it was a bit scary going over the hole, I won't lie. I've got some pictures of my friend Laura with the guy helping her leaning over backwards. I'm also going to put this in a blog post so you can see some of these pictures and I will link that in the show notes. But if you go to traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash blog, it will be there. But I'll put the actual link to the actual post in the show notes once I've written it. So I took a picture of the plaque about the Blarney Stone and it says the Blarney Stone is directly above you. The price for kissing the stone has always been a great one but in the past it was a dangerous challenge and there's a picture like a little cartoon with a dude sitting on the grass next to the castle looking up with a big bump on his head because he's obviously fallen out <laughs> fallen out the hole and it says today the introduction of solid iron bars for protection ensures that you need only flirt with eternity so that's all very reassuring. I also took a picture of a plaque for the murder hole and it's got a like a cartoon of a knight of some kind under an umbrella with a load of stuff, arrows and hot liquid pouring down on him. And it says, any unwelcome visitors entering the lobby below were easily deterred from further entry with arrows, rocks or boiling liquids dispatched from here. Seems pretty handy to me. Where are you going to go? And who are you going to become? I completely flipped the script on my life and you can too. After a back injury and then the COVID lockdowns left me housebound for years, I decided to completely change my life. I pivoted in my business, handed in my notice on my house, put all my stuff in storage and then headed out on the road fulfilling my lifelong dream of becoming a digital nomad. I wanted more out of life, more meaning, more purpose, more excitement, more adventure, and I got it. I made all of that happen and so can you. Now, it's my mission to help others transform themselves through travel, whether that's with a single trip, an extended stay, or a full-blown digital nomad lifestyle. For more information on travel transformation coaching sessions with me, Jessica Grace Coleman, just head to traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash coaching. And now, back to the Travel Transformation Podcast. After that, we trundled along in our car for a bit more and we went to our next Airbnb, which was absolutely lovely. It's called Cottage Kiel Abbey. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's K-I-L-L-E Abbey Rural Retreat in Shrewl. Uh, Shrewl, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's S-H-R-U-L-E in County Mayo, Ireland. And it's the entire cottage hosted by Breda. Um, Brenda without the N. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But it's absolutely gorgeous. She was in half of the building, I guess. Um, We were in the other half, but it was really big and had an upstairs and a downstairs and we could use their garden as well. And it was a beautiful, beautiful garden. And we could sit on the porch eating and drinking. It was great. 
She also had a dog, Tika, a lovely black lab who would come and hang out with us and that is always a bonus for me. And if I remember correctly, when she wrote the Airbnb review for us, she said it was lovely to hear. <laughs> hear three lovely girls sitting on the porch, drinking alcohol and giggling. And that pretty much sums up what we did there. <laughs> Took lots of pictures of Tika the dog, so I'll include those in the post as well. So, so far, not very Father Teddish, but after this, we went to Alwi... Alwi Cave? I'm sorry, I'm butchering these names. A-I-L-L-W-E-E Cave actually featured in an episode of Father Ted. I think, I don't know if the episode's called The Very, Very Dark Caves, but that's the name of the caves where they, they go. They go to the main, oh, it might be called the mainland, actually. They go to the mainland and they go to the caves that are called The Very, Very Dark Caves. And the tagline in the show for the caves is, it's almost like being blind. <laughs> and it's famous because a famous actor was in it, Richard Wilson, who played Victor Meldrew in One Foot in the Grave. And his, his slogan from One Foot in the Grave was, I don't believe it. That was awful, sorry. But they basically included that in the Father Ted episode and they got Father Ted to go over to him and say that to him because he thought he'd love it. And obviously he goes absolutely ballistic and <laughs> starts um, hitting Father Ted and get, gets in a big rage while Father Dougal just stands there with a smile on his face taking pictures. And this, they end up following him around the cave system because um, they're in the same group. And at one point, Father Ted says, I don't believe it again, not meaning to do it in the Richard Wilson voice. And it echoes around the caves and he gets really angry. And then they get stuck in the caves and Graham Norton pops up. And anyway, it's a great episode. You need to watch it. But we went to the caves that they filmed that episode in and very nice caves. I do love a good cave tour. Very nice lights lit up everywhere. Stalagmites, stalactites. Not sure what else I can say about the caves. <laughs> we also went briefly to the Cliffs of Mohair, I think they're called, which also feature in Father Ted, and they were very pretty as well. And we actually we did get some good weather. Looking at this picture of the cliff, it, it looked quite blue sky, which is quite good for Ireland, because it's usually raining. But of course, the rain means that it's very, very green. The Emerald Isle is very pretty. Then we went to the actual Father Ted house itself. So this was the pinnacle of our Father Ted tour. It's actually called Glanquin Farmhouse and it is in County Clare, so over to the west side of, of Ireland. And sadly, you can't do this anymore because I, I double checked before recording this podcast, but we went there for afternoon tea. You could actually book in to go in the house and they didn't film in the house. They had sets for the interiors, but they filmed a lot of stuff outside the house and it looks exactly like it does on the TV show. And so we got pictures outside the house, we got pictures inside the house. We had Father Ted afternoon tea. They provided props <laughs> you to dress up as masks and things and um, caption cards of quotes from the show, like, will you have a cup of tea? Go on, go on, uh, go on, you will, which is Mrs. Doyle. And the guy who owned the house actually owned it when they filmed Father Ted. So he, he did a bit of a sort of storytelling hour where he told us stories of when they filmed there and... I felt very old because in one episode, someone deposits a baby on the floor outside the front door of the parochial house briefly. And Father Ted opens the door, like looks at the baby. And then the person who left the baby came back and went, oh, sorry, wrong house or something. But the baby in that episode, we found out was the guy's daughter, who was then 18 years old and serving us our tea. So we felt very, very, very old at that point. It was great going to the Father Ted house. It was so surreal but really cool and I'm just so sad they don't do it anymore I don't know if it's since Covid they don't do it anymore you can go and see the house but obviously it's a private home so you can't now go and take pictures outside it you can take pictures from the road but obviously keep in mind that it is a private house and you know be respectful and don't hang out there for ages lots of people do go there in costume take pictures from the road a lot of them do the pose from kicking bishop brennan up the arse which is an episode one of them dressed as the bishop one of them dressed as father ted um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is going to sound very weird, but they do that and th that kind of thing a lot. And I think you can get a tour that goes there now. tedtours.com forward slash tours seems to be one. If you're in a group in particular, they go to the Father Ted house, the pub, uh, Mrs. O'Reilly's house, the roundabout, which is locations from Speed 3, if you've seen that with the milk float that can't go above four miles an hour, or the bomb glows up. And um, that's the one with Pat Mustard, the milkman. <laughs> Oh, they also go to the Song for Europe waterfall. If you've watched the Eurovision episode where they do the, uh, he has a dream where they have an amazing music video with them next to a waterfall. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't done this tour, but it looks great. And that's tedtours.com forward slash tours if you feel like going and doing your own tour. 
After that, we went to the pub that I just mentioned called Vaughan's. The thing about Father Ted is it's very controversial, especially when it comes to religion and things like that. But the joke is always, always on Father Ted himself. He is the butt of all the jokes rather than anything else going on around him, which I like. So after that, we went to Northern Ireland and I found it weird in that because we drove from Ireland to Northern Ireland. And even though Ireland obviously isn't that far away, it still felt like a different country. But as soon as we got to Northern Ireland, which is obviously part of the UK, it felt like we were back in England. Like all the road signs changed and just everything had a different feel to it. And I found that kind of very weird. (laughs) But that was a side note. Laura's grandparents at the time lived in Northern Ireland. So we dropped her off there. She was going to stay with them for a bit. And then Ruth and I headed out on our own. We went to the Titanic Museum, which you can find out more at titanicbelfast.com. So that's in Belfast. And it was a very good museum. The, The building itself is very cool. They sort of made it to look like the front of a ship. And you can see, obviously, the docks where the ship was built. Basically, I think this is where the ship was built rather than where it sailed from. But also got some hilarious pictures of us. <laughs> the ones where you stand in front of a green screen and they put you on the like the front of the Titanic, like Jack and Rose. And but we're just sort of standing there looking a bit gormless and <laughs> awkward. Maybe I'll put those on the blog post. Maybe I won't. But it is a very good museum. There's a lot of stuff there. And if you're at all into the Titanic, then I would recommend going there. After that we went to the Giants Causeway, which is obviously on the coast. And it looks like we had awful weather for this because we're both wearing very fashionable orange ponchos and we look absolutely drenched in these pictures. And it's all very grey. The sky's very grey. But we enjoyed our tour. The tour guide told us all about the sort of stories surrounding the Giants Causeway, the Giants themselves. He was pointing them out, the rock formations that look a bit like Giants. I saw some of them. Some of them were a bit reaching, (laughs) I thought. But we had a great time going around the rocks and taking pictures. And it is a very cool place. If you've not been there, I would recommend going there. So, yeah, I think well, the photo album ends there. So I assume that was the last thing we did before we caught a plane back. And it's something that I really recommend, especially if you're living in England or Wales or Scotland, because it's so close compared to obviously a lot of other places. And I really think I should go there more because I love Ireland. I love the Irish people. Everyone was so nice to us. I love the Irish accent. It's my favourite accent in the entire world. Actually, the the Irish accent and the Northern Irish accent. I love them both. And it was just a really cool road trip. And you don't have to spend a lot of money and you don't have to spend weeks and weeks exploring it, although you obviously can. We did this in five or six days, I think. I don't think it was a full week, but we still managed to fit a lot in. And I really want to go back and do another road trip around Ireland. Like I say, the other only other places I've been apart from this road trip were Waterford, where we met the mayor, <laughs> and Dublin, where I went twice. And let me just look at my um, photos from Dublin because we did a lot of drinking. I went there for St. Patrick's Day weekend with a couple of people, with Ruth again, and with some people we met while traveling around Asia because one of them was from Galway, lived in Dublin. Uh, so we went there for a long weekend then. And then we just saw the parade, like big St. Paddy's Day parade, lots of green like green costumes, lots of people dressing up, obviously lots of people getting drunk, (laughs) lots of St. Patrick's Day tat, (laughs) lots of shamrock accessories, where everything was lit up green. We went to the Leprechaun Museum, which I actually really enjoyed, even though it's obviously made with kids in mind. They have things like giant chairs and tables and furniture to make make you feel like you're leprechaun size. And they tell you about leprechauns as if it's, you know, the real history of Ireland, mainly because all the kids are there, I guess. But I I liked that. It was just a, a very cool but weird museum. We obviously went around a lot of the shops. We went to, I'm not sure if it was this, I think it was my other trip to... Uh, Dublin where we went to Trinity College and we went in the library there which is quite famous because it's a beautiful library yeah and the other time I went to Dublin was with my friends Ruth again Vicky who I went to New England with with Ruth Laura who we went round the Father Ted trip with uh, Katie who was my roommate in Colorado and her friend Danny from uni and we had a great time we went to the Guinness factory which I'm not a big fan of Guinness which is shown by the fact that I didn't drink my free Guinness in the bar, even though it was free. And usually if it's free, I will drink it. But I just couldn't stomach it. Maybe this was a while ago now, so maybe I should try it again. Um, We stayed in a hostel quite near the Temple Bar, I think. It was quite a good location. Just a bit of a walk. Um, We went to, yeah, the Guinness factory, which was really interesting. And we went to lots of bars, which is not surprising. And... 
we went to Temple Bar a lot. It was very expensive and it's probably even more expensive now because this was quite a while ago. And we had lots of drinks. There was lots of Irish music being played on the street and in the bars. Lots of pictures of us (laughs) in a club looking very happy, very jolly, very drunk. And yes, this is when we went to Trinity College and they have a college chapel. And sadly, we missed this. But while we were there, we saw a sign on a notice board for something that had just happened, which was the gospel according to Father Ted. And they were doing a Sunday morning service looking at Father Ted and sort of applying it to the Bible. Oh, it's it's called The Gospel According to Father Ted and What It Taught Me About Life. It says, as Mrs. Doyle might say, go on, go on, go on. You will, you will, you will. I apologise for my accent. It's terrible. But I I really like that they uh, (laughs) they did that college chapel itself. And we also just roamed around the streets of Dublin and went shopping and there's got they've got some nice statues and things really great old buildings especially with the university and the chapel and the library and yes I would highly recommend going to Dublin what I wish I'd done is look at more of the independent bookstores because they have a lot of really cool ones there we did go in one but I can't remember what it was called but if I went back I would definitely do a book store tour and we definitely recommend the Father Ted locations if you're a fan. There's still so many places I want to go in Ireland. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. DM me on Instagram at Travel Transformation Coach or email me at info at Travel Transformation Coach dot com. And I would love to know where you think I should go in Ireland. And if you're Irish yourself and want to show me around anywhere, <laughs> let me know, especially if you have a nice Irish accent, because I will literally just listen to you all day. And I apologise if I have butchered that beautiful Irish (laughs) accent in this podcast. Okay, I I think that's it for now. Just to let you know that I'm starting a competition every month where if you, I think it's only on Apple Podcasts, you can actually write a review. I think you can rate on Spotify, but I think you can only rate and review on Apple. So sadly, it only applies to Apple Podcasts. But if you write a review of the show, and if it's nice... (laughs) If it's a horrible one, I'm probably not going to enter you into the draw. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. So please, if only if you do a nice review, please take a screenshot or copy and paste it or let me know your name so I can check out the reviews and send it to info at traveltransformationcoach.com or DM me on Instagram at traveltransformationcoach. And each month I'll be picking a winner and I will send you an ebook of one of my nonfiction titles. They're full books. They're not like little mini ebooks either write your life write your year Uh, write your year is the prompt book to accompany write your life or intentional travel transformation or any of my future non-fiction titles I do they will be in the mix as well so let me know and if you win I will get in touch and ask you which book you like and yeah it's just a way of helping to spread the podcast because the more ratings and reviews I get the more visible it is and the longer I can keep doing this (laughs) so yeah thank you for listening and until next time I'll catch you on the flip side Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Travel Transformation Podcast with me, Jessica Grace Coleman. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review and spread the word if you have friends or family who also want to transform through travel. For a chance of winning one of my books in ebook form, please review this podcast on Apple Podcasts and send a screenshot to info at traveltransformationcoach.com or at traveltransformationcoach on Instagram. I'll be picking a new winner each month and you can choose between any of my non-fiction titles, including Write Your Life, Write Your Year and Intentional Travel Transformation. You can find out more about me at traveltransformationcoach.com and until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.